I'm wondering, should I cut that off? This limb right here, you see it? How it's like, it's just, it's a weird one. The stem, it seems out of place. I guess when you're standing back, it looks like it's supposed to be that. You know, lantanas, they eventually take on a shape that's kind of crazy and unruly, and that's probably all it is, is that's just bugging me. When it's done with this set of blooms, I can give this a very hard cut back, and it'll fill out some more and look a little bit more tidy. There's a really interesting oak down here. Look at this oak. What's going on here? little acorn got in here from the pin oak up the hill. I assume a squirrel did that. Look at the color. It's like pink and green. I don't think I've seen that before. I'm going to leave it. I want to see what it's going to do. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's the video? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Tired. Whew, whew, tired. So much to talk about. Really, just a lot more to do. I, I, I got some potting soil, so I would like to get some plants repotted and uh, do a lot of cleanup out here in the garden. Got some weeds to pull them by some, I mean, a lot. I think I still have a few caladium bulbs left to plant. I'm not really sure. Is that latched? Yeah, it's latched. Because there's a garden tour for June coming up. It will, or July. Yeah, the June garden tour comes out the end of the month. For June, it'll be July, I believe, by the time this video comes out, some filming things backwards here. And I don't normally bring y'all along for the boring stuff like the weeding and tidying, but I thought, hey, why not? If everybody wants these longer videos, then I'm gonna just have to film even the little mundane things that go on out here. Look at this flower, look at that. Isn't that a beaut? I love this hibiscus so much. It's very weird though. Some of the flowers are just boring yellow flowers and some of them open up and have some of the most striking colors in the veining and the color gradient where it goes from yellow to orange. It's a really nice one. I don't know the variety name on it. Things are coming along out here. I have to resist the urge to garden tour right now because I really just want to walk around and look at the plants. I haven't done much of that and it would be fun to just walk around and appreciate things. But uh, no, I don't think that would be productive for getting things ready for the actual garden tour. Oh, geez. Okay, well, I think the first thing I need to do is water. These are looking kind of dry. Ooh, new leaf getting ready to open up on the tie. This is so exciting. I haven't had, it's been years. I was about to say I haven't had a tie in years, which I guess I haven't. I've been planting them every year, but we'll talk about this in the garden tour. I'm just excited to see that leaf open up. Getting bigger and bigger every single time I look at it. Now, the reason I'm tired is, well, once there's just been a lot going on the last several weeks. And last night, baby sister had a baby, so then she wanted me there. So I was at the hospital for a few hours, uh, which is, I mean, that's not a bad, I'm not complaining about that at all. <laughs> I did the hard work, <laughs> waiting in a waiting room for a few hours. No, that, that was not a big deal. Now, it was a planned delivery and a planned induction which is great, but that also meant that I knew I had to get basically all of my work that I needed to do, one for the channel and just everything around the house done by Wednesday, because that was when they were going to get the call to go in for the induction and then expect the delivery Thursday. So that's been kind of nice. That's why I'm able to get a head start on this video here, which is also nice because next week, or actually I think just the same day or a few days after this video comes out, I have family coming in town. I'm going to get to meet my other nieces and nephews I've never met before. So I'm very excited about that. Family's growing. It's so exciting. People are wondering about the haven't met yet part. It's uh, an adoption. And they are the most wonderful, amazing, brave children. We've talked, but haven't gotten to actually hang out. So I cannot wait for them to get here. Going to have a lot of fun in the pool and going out and doing the things but also means that I got a lot I need to get done out here. Although they're not babies so I don't have to worry about them like chewing on plants or anything. That was one of the things I was like oh no I need to hide the oleanders. I don't think I need to do that for 12 year olds. <laughs> I think all I have to do is say hey don't be a dummy don't eat the plants they could kill you. Lots of fun and exciting things. I wonder why am I wasting time hand watering the plants over there on the hill when there's a sprinkler head right there that I could turn on that will do that for me. And I have other plants that I need to walk around and use the hose on. Just, I don't know. I'm still waking up. 
change of plans. Well, not really a change of plans. I didn't really have plans. I'm just going to get a lot of little things on this video. I've watered. It was a quick watering. Not the best watering I've ever done, but give everything a quick drink. And now, after talking about the new baby and everything, realize, hey, if they're going to be home from the hospital tomorrow and it would be nice to go over to their house and get their drip set back up for them and get some flowers planted around some planters and things like that. This wind, wind's knocking stuff all over the place out here. That way, you can come home to not having to worry about watering plants and have some more color and stuff when they want to sit outside with the baby under the gazebo. We've done videos over at their house before in their backyard. So you'll get to see all of that. I have my timers right here. I got them this kit. That was loud, sorry. That they can keep at their house so they can have more independence when it comes to their drip system and not have to rely on me to come over there to do stuff with it. It's just a, it's actually a really nice setup. It has a whole bunch of the things that I use the absolute most, which are the T's for quarter inch drip goof plugs and then the adapters the pieces you pop into the half inch tubing to run the lines off of brilliant i love this little compartment it makes things so much easier if i remember i will try to put the link down in the description for whatever that was called and then i have a whole bunch of la Ferra 50 piece drip <laughs> irrigation emitters they're the adjustable drip heads I'm going to need this, which will probably pop a hole in the bag. A pair of scissors. I'll grab the quarter inch tubing. I have a spool of it in the driveway. And uh, what else? The petunias. I'm going to take a whole bunch of those with me. Yeah, I'm going to get all this stuff out to the car and then go over to their house. Get some stuff done over there. Okay, hey, these aren't looking anywhere near as thirsty as I thought they would. No, these are not mine. I've done several of these at this point for other people. Uh, the way they've been watering these is not ideal. They've just been using the lawn sprinkler, one of those ones that goes up and down and up and down and just letting it hit these. So getting their drip, which is over here, getting that reconnected is going to be so nice. I don't even know how many of these different connectors and things I'm going to need. In an ideal world, I can just swap out the timers and this will be good. Please tell me I didn't forget the Teflon tape. Is the Teflon tape? Okay, good. Definitely going to need that. Oh, and look at these lollipops. Aren't those adorable? Got those planted up a couple of weeks ago. Still need to mulch and everything, but, you know, I mean, hey. Got somebody doing free lawn care for you. Beggars can't be choosers. We get to it when we get to it. But, oh, blue jangles. Looking kind of thirsty. Another reason to get this drip up and running. Planted some limelight prime hydrangeas because she said she wanted to be able to sit in the nursery in her rocking chair and look outside and see the flowers from those hydrangeas, which I hope we will work out. I don't know. There's not a lot of sun right here, but the limelight primes are supposed to be tough. Like, they're just supposed to bloom and bloom and bloom. I wonder if... Maybe the timer over here just needs a new battery. I'm gonna mess with it. And I'm going to walk very carefully through here. Should have worn shoes and pants. I forgot that there's poison ivy all over the place over here. <laughs> really? Okay, well, I think it's okay. I don't have to touch all that. Jeez. I'm not messing with that today. I didn't bring gloves. Okay. Let's see if that's working. Sorry. I bet that this is probably all kinds of noisy. My bad. Okay. Not going the right direction, but... At least it's on. I'm not seeing any drips from anything. It's completely backwards. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go through and <laughs> fine tune all of these probably. Okay, that piece is clogged up. Gonna have to come back with a new one. I also realized I forgot some pretty important pieces. <laughs> Repair pieces. So there are some things over here that there's not much I can do about this. I think I can handle. Maybe. No, this got broken off right in there. So the other end of the hose over here still has that other piece in it. Not that big of a deal if you have your punch tool with you. I don't have my punch tool, but I think I can pop that out and put a new one in its place. Just need to come in here and cut <laughs> that tip off. Just like so. Boom. All right. 
Oh, I just did so much talking and wasn't recording. I was just, it was nonsense anyways. I think we have to turn the water off though to get this fixed. Yeah, I was able to pop that out using the scissors. I didn't bring my punch tool. Wasn't smart. That's always something you need. Get this slip back on and see if there are any more leaks. There probably are. Okay, all good. Can you see the water? Probably not. It's down in there. Got some stuff going on there. The camera doesn't want to adjust to the light. That's weird. Well, you just have to trust me. It's up and running. Got it going on to some of the shrubs over here. I think that this hibiscus, the spinderella, that's really going to be happy. Rose of Sharon here has seen better days. That overwintered in a barrel. One of those whiskey barrel planters. There were two of them. One of them died over the winter and the other one I said, let's just stick it in the ground. It's going to be a lot happier in the ground. This is one that I think only gets like five and a half to six foot. So it seemed like a good spot for it. It's hibiscus on hibiscus, but that's okay. Okay, now I need to dress up these lollipops looking kind of bland, right? Don't they need something? I think they could use some more color. <laughs> I say that as if there's going to be some kind of great reveal here with plants that have great big flowers on them. No, this, this is what I got. They're pretty tiny. Yeah, see, it's not like some mind-blowing improvement. Those are going to take some time to fill out. Those are Sun Patience Compact Orchid. I believe it's a light lilac sort of color. It's a very, I don't know, calm color. Similar to these denim and lace sages up here, but like a few tones more white with a hint of pink. I don't know how to describe it. I really don't. I'm sorry. Okay, now... <laughs> Got a few petunias to plant out back. Here's what I'm working with. What is that? Eight, I think? Eight of these hanging baskets. I got these on sale for what? I think they were about $7.50 a pop. It was something like two for 15 bucks, if even. It was pretty cheap, which seems like a great deal. And the idea here was to use these to underplant these hydrangea trees. These are Pinky Winky, I think, hydrangeas. This one... Looks good. Thirsty. This one over here looks sad. And the only thing we can do for that is amend the soil and get some water to it. There's also a cardinal nest in here, so I'm going to have to be very calm and gentle when I do this one so that I don't upset the birds too much because, see, Papa Cardinal... He's over here. He's watching me. There are alliums planted up inside of these containers. Those were taken from their front yard a few years ago because they just, I don't know if they didn't want them out there anymore. And I said, all right, well, we can put them in these planters. And they've been great here. They're pretty, pretty little alliums. Problem with alliums, though, they stink. These things smell like onions. So when you're sitting here enjoying a beautiful day, it, you have the wafts of onion in your face. So... They want those gone, and I don't blame them. I don't, I don't, I don't think that they look good in those. Anyways, you're supposed to stop, 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 stop. <laughs> the chair just kept on going. So that's the plan here. The drip, I think, is going to be a bit of a headache to get up and running because I came out here and there's little bits and pieces of broken drip head on the ground right there. You see them? So apparently their dogs have been having a lot of fun tearing the drip apart. I don't know what I can do about that other than put it back together and hope that they don't do it again. I was hoping to be able to put some hanging baskets up here. Those are the ones from last year. But uh, me and my forgetfulness this morning, I forgot to grab the spool of tubing. And I'm not going to do anything that's going to require them to do more work. So I will hold on to a couple of these baskets and take them home with me, keep them watered and... When I come back with the new drip heads for the front that need to be replaced, the, there's a 180 piece that I think y'all saw that needs to be changed out. Uh, I will bring my tubing and everything with me and we can get those baskets hung up there. Maybe get a fan too, a couple fans to put out here. That's something they've been talking about to keep things comfortable. Okay, that's all there is to it. I might maybe go ahead and put some petunias on this banana too. That's a cocopo, cacapo, whatever you want to call it. Oh, I think it might look good with some color underneath it at the same time, though. This chair is making all kinds of noises. That's not that's not me. It's the chair, I swear. I swear it's the chair. Uh, what was I? I don't remember. I uh, want to reserve the nutrients for the banana, right? Bananas are very heavy feeders, so... And so are petunias, right? So having them both in the same container, I don't know. 
we'll see. It's in the back, so I don't know if anybody even noticed it. it has an, I don't know. I just need to get to work. I'm procrastinating because I'm sleepy. <laughs> so I'm going to put this down and just see what end up getting done out here. Hopefully there'll be some more color and functioning drip. That would be ideal. That's kind of the whole point. It's the whole reason I'm here. Okay. Let's see. Are these working? Kind of. Pressure is a little bit off, which means there must be a leak or something that is loose somewhere. Seeing a lot of water coming from over there. Is there a split end or something? No, well, there is, but nothing's coming out of it. That's interesting. Where's all this water over here coming from? Coming from in here. It's like the dogs bit through one of the couplers. One of the vinyl tees, not one of the couplers. That's better, but the pressure still isn't that great. I wonder what that's about. I don't think that this one over here needs to be on. I'm just trying to, between the lemon tree and the rose bush. Not really a safe way to get to it, but really don't need that one on. There's nothing planted there. So it'll free up some water pressure. Why are the other heads? Oh, those little dragonflies. Yeah, there's weeds. I don't pull my own weeds. Why would I pull theirs? No. Yeah, that one needs to be going. Got another one over here. So I suppose hopefully shutting that one off helped with the water pressure here because that's not that great. That's an improvement. It was just a trickle before. It's still a trickle, but I'd say that's good enough. I don't know if it needs to be up this high on the banana. Could probably go ahead and dial that down. I think that that's overkill. Yeah, that should be good right there. And that should allow some more pressure to come out of the other ones. Ideally. I don't know. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, oh yeah, that's better. Still not much, but that's definitely better. And there they are. Wave petunias. Wow. <laughs> right? No, I know. Nothing mind-blowing, but... I, don't know. I think it'll be nice to come home and have some more color out here and to have the drip up and running. Except that, well, it's not up and running. You have to turn it on manually. So I suppose that's still better than having to water by hand, but their spigot looks like it needs a new O-ring or wash or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not a plumber, but you can't leave that cranked on because it's just going to leak all over the place. So I think that's about everything I can do. Yeah. It should hopefully be helpful. I got a good amount of fresh soil into these containers. The soil that was in there was just terrible. You can tell it had cooked over <laughs> the last couple of years. There's nothing to it. It felt like dried up sponge. Though so really these need to be pulled and put into a fresh mix. But uh, this isn't the time to do it. Partially because there's a bird in there. Right, they've got a bird's nest. So don't want to pull these apart. And uh, they're pretty thirsty. So... I'd say the main thing to do with them is to get them hydrated. And then when things cool down some more, if we have a cool spell, I don't know if we will, but if we do, that would be the time to handle that. Okay, I'm done. That was enough. It's time to go home. <laughs> what is that supposed to be? Uh, variegated canna, I'm guessing. Look at these beautiful plumeria trees. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, decided to stop by Michael's because I went to Party City to get stuff to put on their front porch for the baby when they come back from the hospital tomorrow. And I needed a vase. And then sales, there's sales. Look at, there's a rug, a six by nine rug. It's on sale for 34 bucks. It's not the prettiest rug I've ever seen. It's only $34, so I'm okay with that. I should have grabbed a card, but I knew if I got a card, I'd end up getting too much stuff. But here I am not being able to carry everything. <laughs> <laughs> All of this happened. All of this just because I needed to come back with one of these. It's, I think it's worth it. These hydrangeas are pretty, aren't they? Got the balloons to stick in them and some goodies to leave in the house for them. Because I'm sure they're going to... Did I feel like we can park? Okay, that was a heck of a jolt. Oh, looks like it's a good thing I did come back because there's more packages to take inside. So the question is, do I pull these hydrangeas out and put those blue ones in their place... Or just set the blue ones on the inside there. Because they're floral hydrangeas. They're, they've been, like, you know, indoors <laughs> in climate-controlled 
space for maybe their entire lives. I don't know. I just feel like if I were to stick with these containers, they're just going to wilt and die, like, immediately. But these are done. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to take care of this and figure that out. Good. Drip. Up and running. Thank goodness. Going to be done with that saga. Okay. This isn't that bad. You don't even know what's going on. The bakers, they were home. They weren't there. So I had to do the thing myself. Considering it's not tip, whatever. They get the point. It's a cookie cake. So I'll enjoy a cookie cake. A cookie cake. A couple of cake pops. Some champagne. And I think that should do it. Oh, I meant to get orange juice. Oh, well. I'll leave the icing there for them. I'm sure somebody will enjoy sucking the icing right out of that thing. Okay, now, the hydrangeas. They look to me like the new growth is still going to flower on these. See, they're still opening up some buds, and they have new growth coming up, so I'm hesitant to pull those. So, for now, these can just sit right here. Or even better, maybe I should just put them inside. That'd be fine. They're just floral hydrangeas. There's nothing fancy about them. I don't really see a reason why they couldn't be in the house. Oh, this is so cute. It's a boy sign in the hello baby thing. I'm so excited for them. Now, back to my home. I've got some fun stuff at Michael's Sun Pack. An extremely cheap rug that feels like it's made out of straw. <laughs> <laughs> that color goes so well with your eyes, Turbo. It really brings out the yellow that I had never noticed before. I think that's just the lighting. <laughs> Looks like he's been through it. I almost said, hey, what's up, garden friends? Oh my gosh. Brain is toasted from the last several days. It was toasted when I started this video. There's the rug. It's not rolled out all the way. And obviously this isn't how I would want it to stay or look. I'm actually not even sure if I love it. I don't know. I like the color. It feels weird on the feet, feels like you're walking on a bunch of straws, but hey, $34.99, marked down from $90, bucks. i am not mad about that. It'll do. Very exciting things just happened. I have been trying to find an outdoor seating set for this patio since 2020. You just caught me really turbo. Okay, you're wet. You're wet. Wet and cold. I've been trying to find an outdoor seating set for this patio since basically 2020, but then a lot of stuff happened in 2020 to all of us, really, and uh, it had some stuff I had to get done out here first. Everything just kind of went to heck, <laughs> trying to not curse. I don't know, is hell cursing? I don't even know. I have all these nieces and nephews now out of nowhere. I'm trying to make sure I can keep my act together. The problem was that there was messes out here because from 2019 to 2021 into 2022, I just wasn't able to do a lot out here physically. And uh, there's just one project left, and it's this corner right here, and it's not even a big project. It's going to be a fun one when I can get to it. I just need to cut this garden bed out and dig it out because it's been raised up from having a lot of mulch in it and uh, move all the hoses, get them set up somewhere else over there, probably just around the corner on that side of the house. And I'll pr I'm going to try and get a hose reel that fits that one-inch hose. I have yet to find one, but... There is a size up from the Gorilla Hose Reel that I got, I don't know, a month or so ago. It was in a video that maybe it could handle the one-inch hose. I don't know. The one that I got can barely handle the three-quarter-inch hose. So I don't know if going to step up is going to be... That's besides the point. If I have to, I'll get one of those big bucket things and just toss the one-inch hose into that so that it's off of the patio permanently and get all the pipes and tubes. There's all kinds of stuff going on in the ground over here. It's going to be a big project. More just like tedious and messy than anything. Whole point there being I needed to get this place in shape before I could really put furniture out here. We got the new table in 2021 maybe? Something like that? I don't know. It's a great table. I like it. But I've wanted to have a seating set. That's the whole point of the story. But I haven't been able to find one that I liked that was a price that I thought made sense. Because with the dogs, and now there's going to be children out here, I just didn't want to spend like eight to 12 grand on something that's going to be outside in the elements and get dirty. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I, no. The cost on outdoor everything, as y'all know, 2020 just skyrocketed. They're starting to come back down. 
and uh, I have basically gone through, I've been through Wayfair, Home Depot, Lowe's, Grandin Road, Ballard Designs, Front Gate, lots and lots and lots, lots of places. Like, just looked high and low, and uh, eventually found something I liked on Amazon. I have mixed feelings about ordering furniture off of Amazon, especially because I know where it's coming from, but the price was right. There were a lot of different options. The only issue I had was that, well, there were a few issues. One, everything is wicker, and I don't like wicker. I think it looks nice, but I don't like the way it feels on your, like when you do this, I don't, I don't like that. I don't, it just, it irritates, my skin doesn't like it. I don't like the way it feels. And from my experience, they tend to not last too terribly long in the sun, and the sun gets intense over here in this corner, which is where I want to put the furniture set. Although I might just move the table over there and put the furniture set. We'll talk about that later when it's time to get the furniture. I can always move things around. I wanted something that had a couch and swivel rockers. That was like my bare minimum or a sectional, but none of the sectionals had arms on them. It was like, everybody wants an arm to lean on. So I decided no sectionals because I could have fit one in here that would have gone this way, then come up this way. Then it would have been like, you're, you'd have to walk through like a little hallway when you come out that door, but nobody ever uses that door. So that doesn't matter. I didn't find anything where I was getting everything that I wanted, where I would have the sofa, a couple swivel rockers and like a fire pit table or something like that. And then I did some digging and managed to piece together separate pieces from separate sellers that I think are going to match the loves, not love seats, the sofa is coming with blue cushions. The chairs are coming with gray cushions. I think that's fine. And I've become a bit of a cushion snob ever since these things came into my life. So y'all know I'll probably be changing the cushions out anyway. So none of that even matters. I'm just excited. I think that they'll fit over there. This is kind of a tight spot. So that was the other issue was that a lot of the furniture is really big and I love big furniture, but it needed to fit out here. I'm just, I'm so excited. I am so happy. Years and years and years of searching and I finally pieced together something that I think is going to work well out here and look good. The wicker on them may not match, but I think it's going to be close enough. And it's basically everything I wanted. So the arms are wood or faux wood. I assume, and the bases are wicker, and I just, I think they're going to look very nice, but you know, it's Amazon, and the prices were really, really cheap, like shockingly cheap, which had nothing to do with why I got them. I actually just really, really liked them, and when I found out that I could get just the love seat and not have to buy, like, a huge set, I said, okay, well, that sounds like the way to go. Just get the love seat. Don't buy the whole set, because the whole set doesn't have all the stuff you need. It has chairs, which are great, but I wanted swivel rockers over there. Okay. Oh, that's done. That's. The, I hope y'all are excited too. There's finally gonna be furniture out here for many years of waiting. Caladiums. I know. I still. There's still some left. Can you believe? Yeah, I'm sure you can believe it. Things have been ridiculous. It's not a lot though. It's just what's right here. This is just soil over here. I've kept it around because I keep going through and like checking it because every now and then, see, like there are a few little bullets that are left in there, and what I may end up doing with this pile right here is just like digging a shallow hole and dropping it all in there because I have been going through and I keep finding new pieces that I didn't know were in there that were hiding. I've been checking it fairly often and going through it. There's plenty of ones in here that are mushy. So that happens, but this is what's left to plant. It's not that much. Just a few. The advantage to having waited just a smidge bit too long, perhaps to plant them, is that they are coming up with the leaves and I can see what color they are, right? So I can determine what kind of sun they need. Typically with caladiums, the more red on the leaf, or even the more green, the more sun they can take, the more white, the more shade that they need. And it can be difficult to determine where to put the caladiums when you buy them in an assortment like I do, because you don't know which ones are which, right? You don't want to end up accidentally planting the white ones in the sun. Although the white ones, depending on the type, they really can take a good amount of sun too. I mean, back here, look at this one. This guy's white. It does have a good amount of red on it, but that, that can take a lot of white. Also, does anybody remember what this one's called? I, for the life of me, cannot remember. This isn't my Florida Beauty, is it? Florida Beauty is supposed to have a lot more green on it, but the only ones I remember having planted in this container were the Spring Fling, which is a little bit rough around the edges right now, but it's still there, and the Florida Beauty. And I thought I had the Florida Beauty planted right back here, so... I don't know what, what happened to it. That's not what the Florida Beauty Caladium looks like, but this is what I got. Kind of looks like a giant confetti, almost. Maybe, well, not really. Point being, that one gets a pretty decent amount of light. And this one over here, which I believe is a Radiant Caladium, it's been in this pot for years. 
I know it's very tiny. <laughs> I think this coal container just needs a fresh mix of soil in it. But this gets a ton of sun. There's a lot of light right there. So you have to take that red for sun, white for shade thing with a grain of salt. I had to take a pause because I realized that I've talked about two wildly different things and didn't make my point with either one of them. The caladiums, I was thinking those might look nice in the front of these bamboo planters. Cause I don't have anything planted in front of them right now because, well, I don't know. They've just, they've grown so much. There's only so much you can do when there's roots everywhere inside of the pot, right? I thought maybe throwing some impatience in there, but I don't know. I think that the caladiums would just, they'd add something nice and bold to be underplanted with. Maybe I'll pull a trailer out from over there. I don't know. The furniture. I never completed my thought with that. I think that's because I was trying to decipher what to talk about now versus what to talk about when it comes in, and chances are I'll just reiterate it all over again, so it doesn't even matter. The sofa is a three-piece set because it, like the whole thing comes from a giant sectional, and they sell it in all different configurations, and I decided to just get the sofa. So it's actually three pieces. So I can remove the middle piece and just have a love seat and two chairs, which I think will fit better over there. I measured. So I, if it's going to be out in a full love seat, it will fit there. But I just, I like the idea that there are options to play with. That's all. And also this rug, while I do think that is very pretty, especially for $34.99, it's not really going to look right with this furniture set, but that's okay. I can put it somewhere else. It's no, not a problem. Maybe I can use it as something to put over the tarp when I'm like doing planting videos so we're not looking at a tarp. I don't know. Those thoughts are, I think, wrapped up. ADD, really, just going at it this morning. Uh, yeah, caladiums in the front of these containers. I think that will look nice. And then I would like to get some rodeos. Whoa, extreme zoom. Planted up in the front of this garden bed. I was going to fill this up with tons of rodeos and fill it up with sand, but the sun patients, you can see, they've grown and they're just going to keep growing. There's a very thin line there for planting, so I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do there. I'm going to plant the rodeos, um, and I have some Tritoscantia over there and some leftover Catharanthus that aren't working very good, but I think they might do okay in that spot. And then uh, I have some plants I'd like to move around at the other end of the patio. The spring grove arbs that were in this container in the fall and winter and early spring, those are just sitting on the patio, and I think that I want to get the okay, beach ball. You're in my way. We'll talk about it when I get down there. Let's handle the the caladiums first. Handle these first and then move on to other things and try and get this all done before it gets too hot out. So it's to be like 97 today. That's that, that's too much. I don't like that. I don't know if it's all that exciting watching someone plant bulbs, but y'all want the longer videos, so this is, this is what you're getting. I had my best here. I actually I do have more room in the front of this container than I thought I did. But I don't on the other side, do I? I don't think so. Got some weeds in here I need to pull. Well, I don't know, maybe I could do something more elaborate in the front of these than I thought. There's still, there's just not much room to dig though. Something back there smells like cigarettes, like an ashtray, I don't know what that is. I don't have a ton left to work with though. I have one James Britannia. It's not gonna do me any good, I have two containers. I could do these two licorice. Uh, vine runner trailers <laughs> in the front. That might look nice. I like these. They're variegated and they need to be planted out. I mean, look at that. It's looking pretty shabby, so getting into a container might look good. I feel like these have more of an elegant appeal to them than what's going to go with caladiums and bamboo, but I don't know. I'll give that a try. Oh, oh, I do have two crazy tunias left of the Mayan sunsets. Huh. I think those would be better coming over the front of the Adenidia planter, though. I don't even know if I'm keeping the Adenidia planter here, right? Because I still have that whole fiasco going on over here with them having brought me a dinky little Adenidia that's not really going to fit over there, but I think it might. I'm not even, I don't know, I'm not even thinking about that right now. I don't see myself moving this Adenidia over there. I think it would look nice, but I think having a double by the steps, it's going to be really hard to get that angled properly. So, uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Do I like that? I do think that these look good with the blue pottery. And they really need to get planted up. I'm not doing hanging baskets 
and I'm done with the hanging baskets I'm doing for other people, so I don't even need those anymore, and they don't look that great, so I wouldn't want to use them for anyone else as it is. Huh. I'm going to fidget and play and see what I come up with. Yeah, I think that'll look nice. It's going to take some time. These need to fill back out, but I do really like the way these look in front of these containers. Also, realize I didn't even tell you what they were called. I just called them variegated licorice plants. This is Licorice Splash. That's the name on that one, and that's why I try and hold on to my tags. I put a whole bunch of caladiums behind each one of those, so there'll be nice big leaves behind everything. I think that'll be good. It'll add some contrast. Something something needs to change with the run of this container. You'll know I ordered bromeliads. They've been labeled as shipped, but <laughs> it's been three weeks and they're still not here. All it says is label was created, but Etsy says shipped, but then you check the tracking and it just says label created. And I messaged the seller last night and basically just said, what the F, what's going on? Place this order a pretty long time ago. I checked this morning to see if there had been a reply and there hadn't been. And then I looked at my sent messages and there wasn't any. So I tried again. And uh, every single time I try and file a complaint or anything, it just says, oops, something went wrong. I, I don't know what to do. There's supposed to be bromeliads, new bromeliads that are actually meant for sun to go in the front of this container. I don't know, it's been, what, three and a half weeks? It's still nothing, so I just leave it blank, I guess. While I was planting these containers up, I came across a lot of bulbs. I had forgotten that there were hyacinth bulbs and um, not tete a tete, not jet fire. Maybe they were like Canadian sus daffodils. It doesn't matter. Lots of bulbs in these containers. And then I remembered that I had told myself that I thought it would be a fun idea to plant these up with some semi tropical plants this year because last year I wrapped these up in the winter time when it dropped below 10, but big bags over them. I had heat cables wrapped around the pots and they overwintered wonderfully. They did great. Usually these yellow bamboo in the container, they defoliate if it gets too terribly cold. But just by throwing a couple bags over them and some heat cables, it kept them going. And it was really beneficial to the bulbs too, because all the other bulbs I put in my containers did nothing. But the ones that had the heat cables, obviously they did okay. So I was thinking it would be smart and fun to try curcumas in these pots. The problem is I forgot about that and then I, and the, not the last vlogs, I have to remember this vlog's not going to be out until like into July, but a couple of vlogs ago, actually I guess it would be the last vlog because the last Saturday video is going to be a garden tour, never mind, that doesn't matter. I planted them up down here. I wanted them up high where you'd be able to see them, but if any of them have come up, then I might pull them. Like if I can even see where they are over here, I doubt that I can. I doubt they've come up yet because while well, it's been a few weeks for y'all, it's only been several days for me. Nah, I don't know. There's some in here. Like I could just pull one from here and one from over there if I could find them. But I guess I'll just wait for them to come up. Hopefully they do come up. And uh, I think that would be a great option. The hidden cone gingers, they have a beautiful tropical flower on them. And when you have them up and elevated, you can appreciate the flower even more because it's not hidden as much by the foliage, be looking straight into it. And having that in each one of these containers, I think would be so pretty. And they might survive the winter, potentially. That I've had them survive the winter here in the ground before with lots and lots of mulch and it was a very mild winter. That's the only time, I've tried many times, but that winter they did okay. But in these containers, if I'm gonna be keeping them around like 19, 10 degrees to 19 degrees, maybe, I don't know. It just seems like it'd be fun and worth a shot. But I don't have, the, is it too late to order them? Can I still order curcuma bulbs? I don't, I'm gonna look. There's not enough sun in there for curcumas. What am I thinking? Look at that. It would be way too shady back behind those. There's no way. I had gingers planted in them last year and it looked beautiful, but it was also just like, it was way too much. They came out three feet from the containers. It was just kind of intense and crazy. And uh, I think a curcuma would be a good option because they would stay in there. But what my, I guess my whole points are that I didn't really make was that they stretched really far the ones that i had in there last year and the kirks are going to end up doing the same thing so uh, I, just, I, don't, I don't think it makes sense however since i don't know what's going on with those bromeliads that i ordered i don't know if they're ever going to show up i could put one of the curcumas that i already have 
in the middle of this container. And then I think the bromeliads that I ordered for this pot are a smaller type that would fit right around the front. I ordered three because I wanted them to come in a ring to be like right in the very front. A ring's not really the right term, a semicircle. I want them to follow the edge of the pot. That's what I'm trying to say here. With the Kirkman, the ginger behind it, I think that might be pretty, maybe. So over here I have a, I think this is Sweet Memory Kirk, and I don't want to use that one. I was thinking this one down here, which is, I keep wanting to say Sangria. It's not Sangria. It's, um, no, it is Sangria. It's Sangria. The other ones I planted down there that I was trying to find before were Banrai Red. Sangria has a really pretty flower on it, and this needs to be potted or planted up into something. So that might look, not, I mean, it's not really going to look like anything until it flowers. When it flowers, I think that'll look really cool there. But is it going to be out of place with the other containers? Like, is there maybe too much going on? I don't think there is, because when the caladiums come up, there will be much more bold texture in these other containers, and I think that that should make it all flow together better, maybe, hopefully. There are two in here. I could divide these up and go back on everything I was just saying and do one in each one of these containers, but I, don't know, I really just, I don't think there's enough sunlight there might be, but then I'd be able to see how they do it during the winter. I don't think that the Sangria is one to try with winter survival, though. Sweet Memory, they can be more cold hardy. There's one that's called, like, Emperor Snow or something that I never see for sale. But I've had that one return for me multiple winters, but it's a different type of curcuma. It's not the same. They get much taller, and the flower is not quite as impressive on them. Yeah, I think maybe just stick with the one in the middle. And uh, maybe the caladium bulbs will overwinter in there. They're also, like, right along the same lines with those kirks that I was talking about. So I'm still doing the same thing. I'm going to be running an experiment to see if they survive the winter. And that's good enough. That was my main thing. Is just I wanted to put something in there that's, like, a zone 7B to 8 type of dieback plant that maybe will overwinter well with these bamboo plants. Mm -hmm. The caladiums, they'll pull that off. Whew, that took a while. I really had to work a lot of soil out of those roots. Very, very very carefully and forgot that there's not a lot of room to work with in here. This pot, it's all roots. That's a big tree that's in here. So even as much digging as I did in there, I don't think it's quite enough. I thought that that would work, but I'm going to have to make a bigger hole. You can see where the roots come out right there. So that's not going to work because, the, well, the, you saw it. They get in the way. Can't get anything down in there with those roots there, and I don't want to chop away at them because this palm tree is doing so well. So I don't see a reason to do that if I don't have to. I don't have to cut like right here. No, I'm not going to do it. Don't do that. Okay, well, I was hoping to have these down deeper than this, but that might be about as deep as they can go. I'd like to get these corms just, just a little bit under, a little bit further down. And that's largely because this goes off to a greenhouse during the winter time. So if this is planted deep enough, that it will it be able to root itself around those other roots, basically make itself stick in there, then it will come back next year, which is, that would be great. That's what I want. One less thing that I would have to take inside into the house, so it's really important that I get this down in there deep enough. Okay, well, it's not as far back as I want it to be. It's going to be tricky when or if those bromeliads ever show up to get them in front of this thing, but I'll deal with that when they get here. Worst case scenario, I put one on each side of it, and then maybe drop a Creeping Jenny or trailer over the front and have fun and do something else with the other one. I know this has some Krispies on it. That's just because it, well, it was hard to water. And it tucked away in a spot in this pot. The way they cut it for shipping, the water just ran right out the top. So glad I'm not going to have to mess with that anymore. This should be much happier in a container that has a few inches of fresh mix in the top. It's going to get more light. It's going to be a lot easier to drench it and really keep it happy right there. So now, I've been debating moving these pots. I don't know if this is worthy of talking about, but like I said, y'all want the long video, so I'm just gonna put it all out there. I might, no, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna give it some time. I was thinking that I would move these pots back into this drainage path behind everything, because that'll make it easier to power wash this portion of the patio, this spot right here, you can see, hasn't been done. Well, it has, but it got messy again, so. No, I'm going to leave them for now, though, because I don't want to have just planted these things up and then shove them back to where there's going to be even more shade. Move them back another foot or so, there's not going to be much light for them. I just realized I hadn't planted this bromeliad yet. It's the Mango Tango. That's from Green Millennium on Etsy. When you order from them, they actually send your plants to you. That's 
something I just love from an Etsy seller. This container, very difficult to dig in. More roots in this one for sure than in the Adenidia planter. But what's nice is that this is a bromeliad. So if the root ball sticks up a little bit, it's okay, it's gonna be fine. As long as make sure to keep everything nice and hydrated around it. Yeah, that's good, that'll fit. Also, look what's coming up over there. It's the Moose of Florida from last year. This palm tree, when it got delivered, it had what looked like big alocasia bulbs in it. And I said, well, I don't know what that is, that's weird. And it was the same spot where I had the Moose of Florida, but it just, it looked bulb, it looked round and bulbous. It's not what I would have expected from a banana, but it's starting to grow, and that's definitely a little bitty baby moose of Florida. I'm sure I will have talked about all that in the garden tour. Things will be repetitious between this Saturday's video and last Saturday's video. I also just realized that this video is not going to come out for another nearly two weeks. So the furniture might be here and be together by the end of that video. This video, I don't even know. I'm not going to be filming that week, folks. I'm going to have family in town, so... I uh, may just have to wait another week for all that. We will see. Okay, that looks better. I got a Brazilian tree fern, and everything I read said that they can take some sun, and it's getting filtered sun, and I was going to say, I think they're full of it. Uh, doesn't seem very happy right there. I'm going to scoot that back because it's getting crispy. Okay, the Roeos. I wanted to do this for a while, but I was waiting until I got the palm tree situation over here handled and set up, but I know, it's not happening right now. It's not happening in this video anyway, so I need to just get these in the ground. I think they will do well here, although the Lespedeza that's up above me is shading things a lot more than it used to. Also, I think there's a sprinkler head right there, so I'm just gonna clear this spot out. Don't have to have rocks right there. <laughs> just, I, instinctively, I want to plant one right there, but I don't think that that is a good idea. I'm gonna just come in here, chop away in this spot, and stick one up here on the slope. One nice thing about having waited to plant them was I took, I thought I had taken all three of them actually, but apparently it's just two of them, and I let them on their sides so that they would already start to grow at an angle, which I know probably seems ridiculous and unnecessary, but this way they're already going to be right in shape for how they need to be, right? They're not going to stick up and they're already going to be ready to run and crawl and spread. You can see the soil over here is nice and sandy. It's because I had some bags of sand sitting here and when I picked them up to move them they broke so sand which is fine because I was going to put a bunch of sand on this slope anyways to give it a more of a dune vibe to it so that's just some more sand for it. I only have one more rowio and I don't want to go too far over here because this is where I'm going to be dragging the palms in and out. Yeah yeah that's what I'm going to be doing. Maybe I need to pick up some more over here and move some things around like this coconut. I don't have time to repot it right now and it needs a new pot. It's not like in this spot. So I'm gonna move it over here to the shade just because we have that heat spell coming. And it's difficult to keep these things hydrated when you're pushing triple digits and they're under potted. So I'm gonna let that hang out in the shade. I think it'll be happier there for the next few days. And actually I do have time to repot. That's not true. I don't want to. The patio is really clean and I'm gonna be filming a garden tour. And it's just, it's rare that things are so clean. So trying to minimize the dirt right now that's all okay and this one I can oh I don't know where do I move that I don't know where to put that maybe nope I'm not gonna do that well, for now I'm just gonna I'm gonna take it over here where it's not going to get quite as much sun I'm just gonna let that chill over here with the petunia <laughs> for a little bit and it can take the sun but we're pushing those triple digits like I said so it's good to move these anyways and I need to clear out this spot so I could even see the front of this bed and get a better idea of what I have to work with over here. This petunia looks like garbage. It does not look very happy. Maybe it'll do better right there. I don't think so. It needs a rejuvenation prune. It's starting to green up nicely. I've been using that petunia feed on it. That's making a difference. It was just getting really long and leggy. It still is leggy. It's greening up. It's not going to stop being leggy until I go in there and cut it back. I also have this hibiscus here that has been very difficult to water in this spot, so I need to move that. I'm going to move it where I can set it over here for right now. It'll be fine in this little cash pot. It'll be nice when it has the pink flowers on it. It's going to get some filtered light from the areca palm. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that already looks better. I liked having the coconut palm there and everything, but it was also something where every time I saw it just screamed mess to me because those things weren't even supposed to be sitting there. I haven't got these lights installed yet. They're partially installed. 
Let me get to that. Another project for another day. All right, so this is the edge. See how much further back that goes? But again, I don't want to plant right here because I'm going to be pulling this palm tree out. Whether I keep the windmill palm there or not, it's got to come out so I can repot it. It needs a new pot. That's what that big black pot over here. That's for the windmill palm. It deserves it. It's ready for an upgrade. Which, oh, by the way, I had one of you all mentioned that they couldn't believe I turned down the free bottle palm. If you know what I'm talking about, I don't know. it's from a video, several videos ago, where they replaced some of my dead palm trees. They were supposed to bring me a queen palm. They brought me a huge bottle palm instead. And I said, no, no, take that away. I don't want it. One of the reasons for that was that the trunk on the thing was probably you know, a good 18 inches thick because, you know, it's a bottle palm. It was in a 20 inch container. It needed a new pot. I don't want to go spend $200 on a new pot for a palm tree that I didn't even ask for. And if I didn't repot it, then it was going to be a nightmare to water because there's like, there was the overhang. There was a bulge from the bottleness of the trunk over the pot. I just, I don't know. It seemed like a headache. There's enough going on. I didn't want to mess with it. If I repot this, well, when I repot this, it is going to stand taller. So maybe it won't be whacking people in the face as much. I don't know. But I could say the same thing about that at an over there if I put that into a better pot. Which it does need. The soil blend that this thing is in is just total garbage. It's basically planted up in like triple shredded mulch. This is not something I would typically use for my plants unless I had them on like full time fertigation, meaning that there's nutrients being pumped into the soil every time that it gets watered. Fertilizer in the water every time it gets watered, which, well, when I hand water, we'll get a little bit of fertilizer every single time. I don't know. I just, I don't like that blend. Don't usually get good growth out of that stuff until it's aged some. And then over time, after it's aged enough, it just turns into mud and the plants can rot and die. So it really should get repotted. But yeah, I don't want to spend 200 bucks on another one of these pots. It's dramatic. They're not quite 200, but they're pretty expensive, like 145 to 200. Sometimes they're like $400. Depends on the color. The black ones I can usually find for under 200. But that's a lot of money. And I'm fine with this staying in the nursery container because you just, you know, throw some sweet potato lines on there. You won't even be able to see the container. But I don't like that soil blend. So I don't know. That's, again, that's probably a thought for another time. Back to finishing up this spot and seeing what kind of space I have to work with. Yeah, so the next rodeo should really go right about here, right where this bundle of weeds and fern is. But I don't know. Will I be able to pull this out without smashing it? I don't know. I'm thinking probably not. So maybe I should hold off on planting the last one. I really want to plant it though. I could just stick it right here. This is really sandy soil, so I can always pick these things up and move them. I need to get down here and weed anyways. There's all kinds of little nettles and things popping up, mustards going on over here. The ferns, I'm tempted to cut them back because usually by mid-July these die back on their own. The spot gets really hot for them. These are ostrich ferns. They don't always like that heat, but uh, okay, I'm gonna switch over to the phone. This isn't working, it's too dang hot. I get like two minutes in, it just cuts off, and that's when I have had a fan of a different fan that was on my tripod, tripod, tripod. That's with having a fan on the tripod, a different fan blowing air onto the camera. What's going on? It's 97. Well, actually, it's down to 94. It feels much better now, especially in the shade, but this just isn't working. I don't think you'll ever tell any difference at all when I combine the colors with, with everything. It won't be very noticeable at all. So I didn't even need to show you that, but the phone keeps overheating too. But what's nice about that is that when the phone overheats, I can't really show you because I'm using it, but I take this, I just flip it like that, and my phone fits right in there, and it cools it back off within like a minute. And I've noticed as long as I pause about every five minutes, it seems like that's enough to keep things moving, which is great because it really makes these little projects take a long time when you have to constantly cool things off. I did get the rodeos planted. I figured I didn't have to film it. Everything kept overheating, so I said, forget it. I'm just plopping a plant in the ground, but look at what's happened. That's, a, that's some heat. Pretty intense heat. I'm going to give this a little bit longer. I'm not going to look at the sun, but y'all can see it. I would say in hopefully the next half hour to hour, That'll be more behind the tree, and then I'm going to water. I'm tempted to do it now, but it's just so hot. When it's not that hot and things are wilty, I don't really worry about it, but it's going to be a big shock having cool tap water hitting soil that warms. I'm just going to give it a little while. Let's keep our fingers crossed. They should be fine. And the sun impatience to do this, this is just what's more extreme than 
what I'm used to them doing. I don't think that that sprinkler head over there is doing what it's supposed to do. I'm probably going to need to change that out. The sprinkler head that I mentioned was hanging out down in there. I'm guessing that's not coming up high enough to get all these because they don't usually look like this when the irrigation has been running. And it was only like 97 for like an hour, right? It peaked, it went down. It's not that bad in the shade. So this is, uh, I feel like they're being kind of dramatic. Oh, uh, maybe they're not because I watered everything over here very heavily and they're wealthy and sad too. So uh, it's fine. I'm going to go do some other things in the shade. Let that area just simmer and sit for a while. Maybe get back to it. Maybe not. I don't know. Okay, down here, I don't, there's not that much that needs to be done. I just need to move the evergreens around. That's pretty much all there is to it. Got some weeds pulled. A few of them slipped through the cracks. Those are the ones that have thorns on them. Need to put on gloves to pull those up. I just, I have a couple of spring grove arbs that were in the winter and fall and early spring containers. These big blue pots, not these big blue pots, it's the ones on the other end. And I think I'm going to put those into these containers that have these little smaller junipers. I think they're or cypress, cinnamon and spice cypress, juniper, I don't know. Would close up the gap better having something bigger in these containers. Are you, you, you don't look like a, okay. <laughs> Arborvitae, never mind. Pull these out. Oh, okay. It's a little bit heavier than I expected it to be. And I'm going to relocate them. Somewhere, I don't know where. Yeah, I don't know where. I thought I'd come up with something if I just hit record again. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll drop them over there. I'm not planting them because I want them to go back into these containers in the winter time. And for now, let's put those spring groves in here. I think that that will seal the spot up better. I'd like for it to feel more closed in. Found a seashell in one of those containers. That's gonna make Turbo happy. He's got fun playing with that thing. These are extremely thirsty and therefore very lightweight. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this now is because now that the shade's over here, I need to water. It makes sense to move these before I water. Oh yeah, see, much better. Thirsty, they'll look better when they get some water. I just proportionately like these a lot better. They have better shape to them. Those other guys, they're, they're nice, but I don't want to add anything as far as privacy goes, that's for sure. Okay, and now I have two junipers over here. Don't remember which ones these are. Did I save a tag on them? That's what I usually do, I try to. Always save a tag on these. Emerald feather, oh that's right, I really like these because they have the poof on top of them, it's like they're wearing a hat of some kind. I think these only go like 10, 12 feet. Yeah, 12 feet tall, 5 feet wide. It's like a miniature Taylor Juniper or a miniature um, Italian Cypress vibe because they're nice and narrow. Not as narrow as you would get with a Cypress, but more cult hardy. I actually wouldn't mind leaving these over here. just need to scoot this one over because they add some privacy, right? I, it's kind of nice having the height right here. Oh, that's already so much better, just having those off of the ground. That looks nice. I kind of like having this one here in this big urn planter. I usually do something more elaborate and tropical in this one, but uh, I kind of like it. it. Needs to be cleaned up and backfilled and underplanted, but yeah, I think that's nice. Oh, Turbo, I am so sorry. He's watched me pull the shell out and I didn't give it to him. You want it? You want your shell? Oh, hold on. Hold on, Turbs. I get some more dirt out of there first. Shake it off. You know, a little bit of dirt's okay. You ready? Ready? Here, come on, go get it. <laughs> you, you can get it, you're free, go get it. There he goes. Distracted? No, he's trying to find it. Come on, you can find it. I can see it. I know you're at a different angle. It's right there, Turbo. There it is, get it, get your toy. Gotta think about it got to think about it. I don't blame him. He's got to work up the courage, I think. And actually, I think he's just enjoying the excuse that he got to get in the pool. Not that he needs one. When it's this hot outside, he has free range. Go ahead and get in the pool. He's soaking wet before he even jumped in. He gets, all right, he, he forgot about it. Never mind. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. You're going to get it? That's a big shell. It's probably kind of tricky to get his mouth around it. Can you do it? Almost. That's okay. Good boy, Turbo. 
That was a nice effort. It was a good job. Good boy, Turbo. Uh, oh, chipmunk. Did you see? Where'd it go? There it is. There he is. I'm so happy. I haven't seen them out here this year. Usually they're everywhere, and I'm like cursing them for tearing things up, but in a more playful way. I really like them. It's very weird that I've been seeing. I just thought that like the hawk population had gotten big enough that they weren't out here. That's fun. I love them. They're goofballs. Does that look better? It didn't really do before and after, but <laughs> I think it looks much nicer. Oh, we're going in for another attempt. Good boy. Good job, Turbo. There you go. You did it. You got that shell. Good boy. You're going to get out and celebrate, or you're going to drop it back in the water? Yeah, he dropped it back in the water. Not surprised with that. Usually with those big shells, he gets them out and he knocks them all over the patio and has a blast with them. My forearm is on fire from those junipers. Why didn't I wear gloves? I know that I'm allergic to them. That was really dumb of me. My skin. Gee, ah, that stings. All right. Got some stuff to straighten out over here. Have this Monstero. 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 A little bit more exotic. Putting it back here. It's been enjoying this rock wall. And I'm going to let it hang out there by the rock wall. I just, I just went off the patio. Drop that inside of that pot. So now things look more intentional. That's exactly what I meant to do. I wanted this crimson to be in that pretty brown pot. And now I'll figure out all this stuff too. It's just a little stuff. I want to get them set up in a way where it doesn't look messy. And that's usually the tricky part with all the little stuff is setting them up so it doesn't look messy. I think those look good there. Once the impatience grow up in front, you won't be able to see that nursery cannon. You can barely even tell if that pothos is wedged in there if the hanger weren't on it. Wouldn't be noticeable at all. I have pretty much everything mostly off of the patio over here. That mostly just needs to be done because I haven't power washed down here yet. I only did from like that pot right there and down to like right there. So it's only gonna do all of this, which I'm not going to do right now. That's too hot. Don't feel like doing that right now, but and everything's out of the way. I start cleaning up and get the edges back over here. Oh, no, I still gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with these guys. I think these might look cute in front of the big arms. Oh, oh, just spilled dirt all over my foot. I was gonna say back there in those blue containers, but I think that actually might look kind of dumb. I'm just gonna let these hang out over here for now. I was thinking maybe I would just plop them into these blue round planters, which by the way, somebody asked me weeks ago in a video what the plan was for these. I don't, I don't have one. <laughs> That's why they're over here. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I've had them for a long time and I'm um, just, it's ridiculous that I'm trying to cut back because <laughs> I'm not, but there's just so many projects and things going on that I just don't feel like figuring out what to fill those up with. I would rather handle maintaining or I should say perfecting what I already have and then you can have fun with other things. So this year, I'm not going to do anything with those. Uh, hopefully next year, but this year, no, they're fine right there. Move the parrot of bird of move the bird of paradise over here into this corner because, well, it some shelter and some privacy. So what I was thinking I was going to do with the sugar and spice arbs, these right here, was I was just going to faux plant them into a couple holes right here, and then lift them in the fall and put them back into those containers, and then the spring grove arbs will go back into the pool planters when the palm trees are gone. And I also discovered I have a couple more used over here that I completely forgot about and need to be planted. I'm not going to do that. It's too hot. They already look kind of rough, so I'm just going to leave them alone. Leave these alone. It's supposed to cool off in a couple of days. We're supposed to drop back into the 80s for like, I don't know, 48 hours. And then I think it's supposed to rain too, so that'll be a better time. We have not had rain. We need rain so bad. It is so dry here. Has this mess been bothering anybody? Every time I walk past here for the last like three months, I'm just like, just pick it up. Just pick these up and move them. That's all you have to do. It's a net. You can just throw everything in the net and pick the nets up and boom. Look at that. Better. Well, mostly better. They're still dripping the way, but it looks better. Speaking of the drip, I gotta get that back up and running. The amount of time I'm spending out here watering is just absolutely outrageous right now. Like I mentioned, it's not raining. I haven't had much rain since really late May. Actually, I think I'm gonna water in here again later. Then pull the weeds up because the soil's kind of dry. I don't want to turn things up too much. I was thinking, instead of my original plan was to just do a, all the drip at one time. And by at one time, I mean like spend a whole week working on it so that I can have the entire backyard, everything, set up onto the drip. Oh, it's starting to stutter. The screen's stuttering. It's going to overheat soon, I can tell. I can go ahead and just wrap this thought up then. 
I think that it would be smart to go ahead and at least just get the drip run to a few spots to save myself the time. And so the plants that aren't getting watered well by the sprinkler heads have an opportunity. So I can run a drip. It would only need two timers and run a line that goes from here and down with some sprayer emitters, the circle emitters. I probably need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably eight on one line. There should be plenty of pressure for eight of those for the small circle emitters. That would handle all that area. Then another timer right here that I'll run through over here, pop it underneath the deck, decking, whatever we call this, the dock, and then run it just under and behind everything and get a drip line set up behind all these plants. That alone is going to save me a ton of time watering and it would be easy to do, right? And the stuff over here, okay, I'll still have to hand water it, but it's not going to be as big of a deal if everything else over there is handled. And then when I'm ready and I figure out what's going on with the plumbing and hoses and irrigation that runs this side of the yard, then I can get something set up for everything over here. Yeah, that's what I need to do. So I just need to sit down and write down all the stuff I need. I need to stick this under the fan. It's really, it's, I can feel it. It's getting hot. Okay. Use the time that I was cooling the phone off to go ahead and make my list here. I think this is pretty good. Got four timers, and I didn't even notice what this pen said. Ambard, I don't know what Ambar is. That reminds me of Babar. Did y'all watch Babar when you were get ADD? It's strong today. American Bar Association, that's what that is. Anyways, four timers. Yeah, I said I was going to do two for this section, and then I said if I'm going to do this, I may as well just get the rest of it done, or another chunk of it done, do two over here. Instead of doing the timers that I've done in the past where they'll run up to four zones, I'm just going to stick with the single outlet timers because the single outlet timers, I always get many, many, many years of use out of them. And the ones that hold four outlets on one timer, I get like a year, maybe two. Sometimes I've had to replace them up to twice in a single year, which is just nutty considering how much they cost. I'm just going to do four individual timers because those just seem to last much, much longer. It's less mechanics and things to deal with when you're, you know, water and electricity doesn't always go together, all that stuff. I thought I was going to need about 150 feet of half-inch tubing. I'm thinking probably going to need more like 200 because I'm going to run this length from basically the driveway, not basically, from the driveway over here. I'm going to need a T. Did I write that down? Did I write down that I was going to need a T? No, I didn't write that down. See, that's why we're going through this. Y'all are helping me remember all this stuff. Half-inch T adapter will be right there between these two portions of the house, basically where the hose reel is. So I can split the line to come this way and go that length right there with, I think I decided on what, eight micro sprayers that I will put small circle sprayers, which do like a five foot radius. And I'll probably need a few of the large circle sprayers too, which can do up to a 10 foot radius. And that's only with very good water pressure that I do not have. And then I'm going to need, uh, what else do I have in here? A pack of one gallon per hour drip heads because when I run the rest of the line under this and over here behind everything, I wanna run line up to the flower pouches. I have more, they're just on the ground right now. You can see they are very hard to keep hydrated. And I think having them on drip will make a tremendous difference. And I don't wanna use the adjustable spikes on them. I think that that would be too much So just probably a one gallon per hour drip head on each one. I'll have one on each side here. I think that would do the trick to keep those watered. I'm going to need a pack of spikes to mount those on too. I need a 12 inch pop-up sprinkler. I, you know, was over there. I planted those rodeos and when I started to do it, when I filmed this part, I said, oh, I can't put one right here because I'm pretty sure that there's a sprinkler head right here. So I planted it over there instead. Then I turned the sprinklers on just now because everything's so dry and I want to see why things weren't getting watered. It turned out that I had actually planted it directly in front of a sprinkler head. I was wrong about where it was. So I had to move the rodeo from like right here to over there. And uh, I noticed while I was there that that sprinkler head is virtually useless. It comes up about this high above the ground and this is all sloped. So that's doing nothing. So I'm gonna replace that with a 12 inch pop-up head. I need an on off valve quick connect to set up on the um, gorilla hose reel thing over there for the fertilizer. Cause uh, I don't know, I've been going back and turning the water on off from the house. It's, kind of annoying. I'd rather just have a valve that I can shut on and off right at the line and then that half inch T adapter. I should have everything else that I need. I have the adjustable drip heads. I have those packs that y'all saw at the beginning of the video that have lots of T's and plugs in them. I don't know if I'll have enough, but I should have enough to get things started. And I have a ton of quarter inch drip line on a spool in the driveway. 
and it should be more than enough to run to everything. It's a few years old too, though. I just realized that. As the middle of saying it should be enough to run to everything, but then I realized that it, I need to check on it because it's been sitting out there for a minute now, so it might not be in the best shape. That stuff gets kind of stiff and crumbly over time, so I don't want to waste too much time. I'll check that out before I decide to place an order because I'm sure I'll think of other things. That's the thing with Drip is it's kind of a puzzle, and it's a fun puzzle, and it's a tedious puzzle. And I need a new punch tool too. Don't want to forget that. That's very important. You can't do any of this without the punch tool. Punch tool, I have the handle snapped off of it, and I had an extra one. I do have two of the ones that it's just like a pole. It's just basically something like this that you just pop down into it, but I really prefer the ones that clamp around the hose. You squeeze it, and it punches it in. It's just, it's a lot easier. When you're punching a lot of holes, the other kind get old and not fun to use after a while. I also have this right here. Have y'all ever used these before? It's a manifold that goes onto your sprinkler system, connected in with a fitting right here. I have a basically a piece of pipe that's threaded on both ends. So that goes right down in place of the sprinkler head and this sits on top and each one of these little knobs right here, those are just black caps. Those come off. When they come off you have this little threaded piece right there that you can put quarter inch line on to run your drip. I don't know. Do these even work? It just seems like so much pressure. Won't it just blow the lines right off? I feel like it would. This is adjustable too, which is nice. You just take a flathead and get into these pieces here. Let's come back into the sunlight so I can get in closer. See that? You just adjust them, turn them so you can adjust the flow on them. So maybe that's how you remedy the pressure situation. I don't know. The reason I thought that this might be a nice option is because if I don't have quite enough pressure for eight of the circle spinners for everything over here with the drip irrigation, then I can swap out one of my sprinkler heads or even just run a T on it, dig it up and put a T and put one of these in. And that would run eight of those circle sprayers and then I wouldn't even need the drip for all that. and. I don't know, that might be a good idea. I think it'd be a lot more work, but in the long run, I don't know. Pressure-wise, this might be a lot better. That's why I'm reaching out to y'all. Although, I just realized this video is not going to be out until July. Like, July 5th or 6th. And today's, I think, June 24th or 23rd. The, the, I don't know, I'm going to want an answer before then. So I'll do some Googling and see what I can come up with. But uh, that would be a big helper when it comes to having enough pressure with all the drip line over here. I was thinking about that because when I was just talking about this head over here that I need to put a larger pop-up on, I was thinking, well, that would be a decent spot to put one of these, but I don't want this sticking up in the front of my garden bed either, especially with a bunch of quarter-inch drip lines running off it. That's going to look really ugly. So it would be something I'd probably put around the corner and I would tee into the irrigation line and set it up somewhere else further in the back. So with that kind of pressure, I would think that the lines could be pretty long on these, right? You would think, right? I don't know. Just a thought. That's what's going on here. I am very tempted to go in here and pull that windmill palm out and put the Adenidia palm over there just because I really want to see what it looks like. I also really don't want to make a mess. Everything's so clean. Ah, screw it. need to pull the windmill palm out anyways, don't I, because of the... Well, I need to repot it. I'm not doing that in this video, but I do need to repot it. I just realized I had that fan blowing on my microphone the whole time I was sitting there. That was probably so annoying. I probably just had so much fan audio in the back of everything. I apologize. I swear, I watered them. It's going to take them some time, but they should be okay. I know. Not a good look, but they will be fine, I think. They should be. I really hope they will be. They wilt down on me all the time during the summer, but this is another level of wilt. Oh, this is not going to be a quick in and out kind of situation, is it? I'm going to have to lift the palm tree up and over this, which is doable, especially with the windmill palm. That had an idiot, though. That pot is much bigger. Oh, maybe I can dig all this stuff out. Are you having fun sniffing everything? You think you're the star of the show? Yeah, you are the star of the show here, sweetheart. I love you. Thank you for being such a good helper, Turbo. It's so nice having you around. Yeah, if I just move 
everything that's right here. Oh yeah, that fern's screwed. No way that's gonna make it through this. That's kind of a path. Not really, but it's, oh, oh, this is gonna take me a minute. When we cut back, hopefully there'll be an Adenidia palm over here, or <laughs> maybe not. I don't know, it's really hot. <sighs> that thing was really wedged in there. <laughs> And this is also why I didn't want to plant anything up in this area right here, because it just would have gotten smashed. The only way to get these things out when they're this big is to lay them on their side and pull. So I had to lay it down, straddle it, one leg up here, another leg over there, and lift it up and pull to get it out of a hole and then come out here and pull it the rest of the way. Okay, glad, <laughs> glad to have that done. Not that it really makes a huge difference. Haven't done anything with it yet, but at least it's out of there. That's the hard part. You can see it's not terribly heavy. I'm able to pick that back up with one hand, basically. But uh, when it's down there in a hole, much harder. I'm going to search around, see if I can find some cinder blocks or something, stuff to start filling in that hole, because I'm going to have to raise it up if I'm going to put the Edenidia in there. Or maybe I can just grab a shovel and see if I can just pull a bunch of mulch down. There's not that much. I know it looks like a lot of mulch, but it really, it isn't that much. Hey, kitten. See the kitten? She's watching us. It feels so good to have that pulled out of there. I know it doesn't, is the light going to adjust? Okay. Uh, it doesn't, maybe, no, I was going to say it doesn't seem like it needs a repot. That, I'm sure it looks like it needs a repot, right? This container since 2019. That's plenty long enough. This thing is going to be so happy to get into a fresh mix. And I think that looks better over there anyways. You know, some people like the other way around, but shade-wise, this is better. There's gonna be seating over here. That's actually gonna provide some shade. I need to rotate it, but that's the part of the point there. And uh, that entity is not gonna provide any kind of shade at all. I'm talking most about shading <laughs> the top of this table, not the people sitting over here. I don't know, windmill palm's not quite that big. And when this is repotted into that container, it'll be about three inches higher. So it'll fit in there better. Might need to prune a couple fronds off. It's probably going to be hitting people in the face. This one, yeah, I don't know, it's surprisingly not as heavy as the other one. I'm trying to be mindful of how I pull this in here. When I pull it in, I'm going to want to make sure that whatever frond is going to be over this door is the oldest frond, so the lowest one down. So this one right here, needs to be turned in this way, because that way if I have to prune anything, I'm pruning from the oldest and up and not pruning off anything new. Okay, I like it. Yeah, it's not as dramatic as the windmill palm, but that's kind of how I would prefer it. I just like things a little bit more clean over here. And I just, I don't know, this is just what I like. I like having the adenidia over here. I like seeing the pinnate fronds through the window. And I went in and out the door, had this angle just right, nothing's hit me in the face, so that fits. It's shorter than I would prefer, but really I would say another, what, one, two, three, four, like between four and five more rings on that trunk and I'll be much happier. Once the crown shaft is up to like right there, I will like it a lot more. And that is achievable with a lot of fertilizer, very consistent fertilizing. You can pull that off by the end of the season, no problem. I need to fill this back in. Oh, and so much for not wanting to make a mess. Look what happened. That's not that bad. That's simple. I can hose that off. It's not as much of a mess as if I were out here repotting a bunch of plants. Okay, I'm gonna start putting things back where they were and have a final look. Okay, that's in place. Things are watered in. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm gonna adjust some things, move some things around, and uh, and I'll get to finishing up the landscaping over here in this spot, but overall, I think that's good. I need to find my snips so I can cut that piece of blue, that piece of ribbon off of there. That's been bugging me. Yeah, if this windmill palm were just a foot taller, it would be a better fit for this spot, but it has, you know, it's wide. So the door and the faces doesn't really work in this spot. I suppose that's the one nice thing about the shape of this Adenidia is the fronds are nice and upright so you can walk right past it. That's the case for now anyways. Things open up a few more fronds and those are going to start to arch more outwards. But when they do that, it should be fine because like I said, I got the oldest frond down at the bottom. 
So if they start to do that, then I'm cutting from the bottom and up, which is, if you're gonna do it, the way that you need to do it. Oh, things are so thirsty. I've been watering, took like 30 minute break from what y'all just saw and just been watering. It's like the fifth time today. That's why I went over all this because this really, this needs to be a priority. I have got to get something going with the drip. It'll free up a lot of time in the day and it'll conserve water. It's more efficient to water with a drip. And uh, the other point, <laughs> whatever that was. Oh, deep root watering, which is what I do with the hose anyways, but it takes a lot longer going from plant to plant, making sure that the water is getting down nice and deep. Uh, the plants just seem to respond well to it. Things grow so well on drip. I did think about maybe putting the Robolini palm right there, but I, don't know, I just, I'm attached to having it in this spot. I like it right there. Also the container that the Robolini palm in is massive and it would have been very difficult to get that over there. I don't think it would have worked out all that well. And then, you know, I toyed around with the idea. I don't know how much I talked about in this video, but I had in other videos about maybe putting this double trunk at Anidia in the spot where I just put the single trunk. That would have been an option. I just think it would have looked kind of weird. I don't know why. It was just hard for me to envision it. And I've already underplanted it, and even more so in this video, put more things into the bottom of that container, which would have been lost over in that spot. I don't think we would have been able to see the underplantings as well. And I would have to change some of them out too. Like the New Guinea impatience probably would fry over there in that spot. You also saw what the sun impatience looked like. I don't think the New Guineas would have looked very good either. Oh, and also I'm not done over here. There's more I would like to do. I'd like to tidy it. I'd like to move more plants over there. I'm just hot and I'm done and I'm over it, but I'm not done. But I am over it. I just I fix that at another time. Chances are in the garden tour that'll look different than how it does now because it's being filmed before the garden tour, which should be the Saturday video prior to this one. Oh, y'all want to hear a funny story? You know, I, if you've been watching the channel for a few years, I've been through a lot of umbrellas. Vin just picks them up and pulls them right out of this table. Well, when I was moving this table around, in a video would have been two or three Saturdays prior to this one. When I was potting up these two palm trees, I moved the table with me so I'd have some shade because the sun was really intense. I noticed something that I had never seen before. Oh yeah, I think I can get to it from right here. Do you see that? Do you see it? No, you can't see it. Right there. Do you see that? There's a screw. There's a, a, a pin that you can push in to help hold the umbrella in place. I had no idea. At least that's what I assume it's for. I just tightened it. Is it for the umbrella? Is it to hold the lazy Susan in place? No, that's for the umbrella. Yep, that's not moving this whole time. All these years, there was a screw down there I could have turned to help hold it in place. I would kind of prefer the umbrellas blow out of the table though, just because I'd rather the umbrella get damaged than pull the entire table over. I've had so many tables get blown over and they get bent and then they don't work right. At least this part in the middle wouldn't work right if that happened. I just thought that was funny. Who knew? I, all this time. There's no manual. Purchased the table, and then like a week later, the company came and set it up. So I, I didn't know. And I haven't spent much time underneath the table. So I'd never seen that before. Good to know. If I get brave enough, I'll invest in an umbrella that cost me more than $39.99. Probably not. Been through way too many expensive umbrellas. I'm sticking with the cheap ones from now on. <sighs> what a mess. I keep fidgeting with the sprinkler head, and every time I do it, it comes up and just makes more of a mess. I hadn't actually replanted this yet. If I said that I replanted it, that was not what I meant. I meant I just pulled it up and moved it to get it out of the way. So I guess I'll just cut this one right here. I think that's the only spot that's gonna work. I can't put it right there. I, maybe right here. That would work. There's more light over here. This is so sandy. That's okay, I'm about to add more sand to it as soon as I'm done with this part. All right, that is in place. I think I'm going to, Grab my snips and cut this old drip line out of here. There's no reason to keep it. I'm not gonna reuse most of that. I can reuse the couplers and things, but it just looks like a mess. Ugh, I just went in and came back out. It was so nice not having to bob and weave around the palm fronds. It's just more open right there. I prefer it so much over the windmill palm. Even though the windmill palm did look good there, just this is better. I don't really know what my thinking was with this. I'm not quite sure why I did that, but that's fine. Go ahead and give that a tug. Get this line pulled out of there. Probably should have done this before I planted up this other rowy oak. That's gonna lift a lot of this stuff out. Oh yeah. 
This is gonna be a big mess. Very big mess. How far back does that go? Should I just cut it? Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut that. Okay, and then this. What is this? Oh, this is attached to the same thing. That's good. That was a whole other line I was gonna have to pull out. So yeah, these spikes and things I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save as much of it as I can. But uh, these hoses, you know, after so many years, they just start to crack and go bad. Okay. It's looking better. Still messy, but looking better. Oh, hold on. Well, I'm thinking about it. I'm in here and stretch that out. See if I can't cut it out. This is, these aren't the best things for that. I should really just be using scissors, but I think this will do. Maybe. No? Okay. Now, my fingers, once I've had this in there and loosened it up, so I'm able to pull that right out. Okay, let's redistribute some shells and some coconuts. I'm trying to keep this built up around those roeos. This, this on the patio, I can't even tell. That fern did get smashed. But yeah, it's just the way things go. Tried to avoid it, but couldn't. This is cute. I should put this over here in one of the beach planters. That one already has a shell about you. Do you have a shell? No? There we go. There's a shell. That's fun. Take some of these larger shells and some of these coconuts. And just try and place them over here in a way that looks somewhat natural and also not so far back in there that Turbo is going to get in and get them and sneak off with them. If they're too far back in there, I know that I'll lose track of them. Some little cluster of coconuts right there. He's been so much better about chewing on the coconuts. When he was a pup, or really up until last summer, it was pretty much impossible to keep him away from those things. That hasn't been an issue so far this year. Uh, he's grabbed them a few times, but it's still not what I would consider an issue compared to how he used to be with the coconuts, where it was relentless and it was adorable, but also very destructive and very messy, and it's not good for him to eat much of that husk either, because it binds them up and makes them constipated and that just opens up a whole new world of problems that you have to deal with right here press that in yeah okay i'm fine with that is this riveting content watching me move seashells around probably not but i think it's kind of fun to record the process of all this i'm just i'm trying to pile them up so it looks as natural as it can look being um so incredibly fake but you get the point i wanted there to just be a nice pile of shells and nuts over here and to keep that opened up right there i just realized that if i'm going to run the drip i'm gonna have to move all this to get that drip line run underneath <laughs> the steps oh man oh well that's okay practice makes perfect let's do it again especially since i'm just tossing things in it's not like there's anything to it i can pull them out and go through them again and I might be able to get the line back under there and just weave it through right here I tried to leave a gap from the back of the palm and between the front of the palm so that when I do this I'll have room but I'll obviously have to move everything right at least a lot of it hey baby need to add clips to that list of things I'm looking for I need to get clips so I can get this light finished and set up over there this is better not as messy. I mean, it looks really messy because everything's wet and there's dirt everywhere, but I'm going to cap this off with some nice white sand. I think that looks pretty good. Should I put another rodeo in there? I have another one. Overwintered a nice big one last year in the growth space. I could take a chunk off of that and throw it in there. I have it down here in this pot with these impatiens and this alocasia that pulled right up. That was easy. Also, I keep talking about the sand and how things are sandy over there. Somewhat intentional, it's a little extra sandy because the bags that I spilt. And uh, the rodeos, they like that. A sandy soil, so they're gonna be happy with that. I could put this like right here, maybe. There's one there, right there. Yeah, it would look great if they kept going down, but things do get more shady down there. So it just is what it is. As these grow and get bigger, I can pop pieces off of them and continue them down there and see what they're going to do. But my guess would be not much because the further we go into the year, the less sun there will be further moving down. So I'm just working with what I got with the type of lighting that I have out here. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Little swoop of the rodeos. 
I'm going to water because, well, I, come on, <laughs> you can see why, uh, again, and then uh, do some cleanup, cap this off with some sand, and wrap it up. Okay, I don't even remember what it looked like before, but to me it looks a lot better. Yeah, the impatiens are still wealthy, but they're already starting to perk up. I like the color that the rodeos have. You can't even really, you can kind of tell that I capped it off with sand. But ultimately, I think that that area is so narrow that I probably don't need to waste much time or energy or money on filling it with sand, even though I think that it would look cool if you could see it. But I don't think you'll be able to see it once those impatiens grow some more. I stopped. I did a lot of hosing off because there was a lot of dirt and stuff that was washing down to the patio. I stopped because, well, I got to change out the sprinkler head right there. See that little nub right there? There's no point in cleaning up too much. I'm going to make a huge mess there. So I just rinsed things, got them washed off. And that was the other thing with the sand. I was like, there's going to be water blasting all over the place when I come in here with the power washer because I'm going to need to give this another gentle go with the power washer because this ended up being a very messy project much messier than i had thought it was going to be and that's okay i moved a coconut palm over because i just i missed having a coconut there it's not the spicata it's one that's in a fresh mix and I don't know, hopefully it'll be happy there it just i don't know it naturalizes the spot somewhat i just i, I like the way it looks they're scrappy little things and i like it i need to get the clips for those lights i know that looks pretty junky but i don't, know, I don't have any clips so that's just the way those have to sit right now. The Chinese fan palm is kind of bugging me right there. I like it, but I also don't. So I might swap it out with a heliconia and put the Chinese fan palm over there. Maybe. I think a heliconia could look good there. Lighting-wise, I'm not sure. Although lighting's going to be a little bit better because this Adenidia is not shading things as much as the windmill was. That windmill was shading things underneath it a lot more. So maybe a heliconia would be good there, but I'm not going to move either of those right now because they need to be moved up into a larger container first. So for now, this is good. I like it. It's much more clean and tidy, and you can walk through the door without having to bob and weave your way through palm fronts to get down. Maybe I should just order another heliconia. That might be a good idea if they're still on sale. I doubt they are because then I would have the heliconias right there, and I could do one right there and do one up on the step here because this Alpinia is the Rembit that's right here. I don't think that's going to work anymore. Just the hunch, but I'm thinking that it's going to be getting too much light more than likely for this spot. So I can move. I really like having that ginger there though. It's so nice. We walk out the door. See, I, I really like it, but if it's not going to work, then I can put it over here where this banana pup is popped up that I really should pull out of there. That's not a sitting spot for a banana tree. And I think the ginger would look good there. I had one there last year that was just a couple feet back and it was beautiful. I really like, there's a fly just going nuts around me. I think maybe it's because I want to see the pole better. I would just do a quick swap out, but it's not that simple because there's a slight slope here, so everything is stacked in. So to pull this out, I have to take everything. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I mostly just like it because it opens up the edge of that step some more. But I also, I like having the Chinese fan palm there. Maybe what I need to do is clean out this corner and plant the Chinese fan palm in the ground. So that'll be lower and in front of everything. I don't, I'm just playing around with ideas in my head. Cause then I could have the cake and eat it too. Knock the bromeliad around when I move these. That looks kind of funky. You know, this is a tight fit. Maybe it's because things are crowded. Maybe that's why it's bugging. No, that, that looks nice. I am also thrown off because these impatience are all wilted. If they were up and looking more colorful, I think that I would be liking everything a lot more. But right now it's just, my eye is drawn to this disaster over here in that corner. But you kind of, doesn't that look better having that corner open? It's a trade-off, right? Because it also looked really nice having those fan-shaped leaves in front of everything. Huh. I don't know. We'll see. By the time, you all will have known what's going on here because, well, I'll more than likely have figured it out by the time the garden tour comes out, which should be the video prior to this one. This, everything's in the past right now. The videos, everything's are flip-flops, so I can take the time off to be with my fam. Yeah, 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 uh-huh. You like? What do you think? I do really miss having the heliconia right there. That's what I was saying. I'm going to have to get another one. Or maybe just divide up one of the ones that I have. Nah, I'd rather just get another one. Getting another one sounds like more fun. Yeah, I'll be playing around with things more and more now that, well, the palm trees are in place, and that just 
frees up time for more rearranging and creativity and then that furniture is going to come in and I'll be moving things around some more so there's no reason to spend more time on it. I think this looks nice. I do like it. I do like it. I just think I like it so much more when those impatience bounce back up. That looks terrible over there. Okay, well, I've had a fun few days. New baby. Got to do some yard work and gardening at my sister's house. Got to come home and do some gardening and yard work here and some cleaning and tidying and getting the gingers moved around and everything. It's just, yeah, this is nice. Need to get a pulse out and cut that thing off. Yeah. I think this is where I'm going to wrap it up because what I have left to do out here that I want to do right now or need to do is repotting and stuff and I'm just gonna give that a few more days, let things flush back out and look better over here, get a garden tour filmed for last week, and then we'll move forward. And the next week, the video after this one, things will be back up to being more current and not two weeks in the past. I know that that bothers some people when things are filmed that long ago. But uh, I don't know, it's just it's the way it's got to go. I'm going to do my best to film that garden tour in a vlog style. I don't like releasing garden tours on Saturdays. I know people really like the vlogs. But it's just the way I had to do things in order to take the week off and spend time with the fam. So I will try and make it long. And I have intentionally left some weeds so I can pull some weeds and do <laughs> other things during the video. Maybe have a peek at the pets or something. I don't know. But now it is time to shower and rest. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out. Comment down below. Say hi. What's going on in your gardens? I know that this heat wave, like here, I don't even know if this is the heat wave. I think that this is just summer. This is July weather, which I know it's July by the time this comes out. But remember, it's June 24th for me or 23rd. I don't even remember. It happens here. Uh, fairly well prepared for it. But I know a lot of the country and the world, things are really intense right now. So hope everybody's staying safe. Staying cool, don't be out there in the middle of the day gardening. You know, try those cool towels. I love those things. Get them damp, wrap them around your neck, wear a hat for some shade, and stay in the shade. Makes a big difference. And drink lots and lots and lots of lots of water. Okay, done with my soapbox. Just don't want anybody out there to get hurt. I'm, you know, I've been out here working in the heat, but I took a break in the middle of the afternoon because it was just too hot to film with the camera. Otherwise, I would have kept going. The camera kept overheating. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.